officially at least. Good morning. So this is a little weekend yin yang flow. So we're gonna do a little bit of yin up front and then we'll do some flowy stuff after that. So I have next to me um, a big pillow. You could use two smaller pillows uh, in the event that you don't have a big one. Um, and I also have a blanket. And that's what I'm gonna use for this early part. And then I'll set those off to the side and we will use uh, maybe some yoga blocks um, at the end uh, during the flowy section. So if you've got those things um, or something equivalent to those things, you can set those out. So we're gonna begin this in a reclining butterfly pose. And the way that I'm gonna use the pillow is I'm gonna put this under the length of my back. So this is a little bit, um, it's not very huge. Like a couch cushion would work really good in this or two little throw pillows. So it's a softer um, lift. It's gonna mostly drop my arm bone into the socket, but it's not gonna affect my chest muscles that much. So if you wanted a bigger lift, you could use your yoga blocks underneath, one under your back and one under your head instead, and that would give you a bigger lift. And then I'm gonna use this blanket rolled up underneath my legs to give my um, knees and thighs a little bit of support, okay? lay back so this is about the middle of my low back and then I want this blanket pretty close to the top of my thigh here so that my thigh bone will rest on it and then I can kind of push it down if I want a little bit more oh there's a sunbeam right there in my eyeball so, <laughs> so with or without sunglasses you can <laughs> come into your pose as well And then you just make little adjustments or adjust your spate, your um, positioning on it, on the props anyway, uh, or in the pose, until it feels pretty good. And once you've gotten your body positioned, take some time to just take deep breaths. little things that kind of, you know, like little thoughts that go through your mind about stuff you've got to do later, or things kind of hung over, or hung over, <clears throat> still kind of circulating in there from yesterday. I'm not sure what the right word for that is. Probably hung over is not that word, but in any case, you know, just little things that are still tugging on you from things that have happened in the past. Just notice those moments in your uh, consciousness, you know, just pay attention. When you catch yourself going down one of those little thought pathways, just come back home to your breath.
our big breaths. Bring the knees together and then we can oh, take a moment to get whatever might have been under the legs. You can, you can take what's under your back out or I'm just going to leave that there for now because it feels nice. <laughs> and then I'm going to take it out in just a moment after I've given myself a little rinse through the legs. Just roll it over and then sweep that out. Oh. It feels kind of nice once you get back onto your back for a moment. It feels kind of nice just to notice where that landed you. Oh, it's kind of great. So we're going to stretch out really long and we're going to bend into a banana shape. So the way, like, if I stretch out, I'm going to pick a side. And in this case, I'm going to take my right side as the longer side. So I'm going to bend to my left. Okay. And then you can do several different things with the arms. So you could take hold of the right wrist in your left hand, for example. And the left arm could be straight or bent. I usually like mine bent. So that just gives me the tiniest bit of pressure um, that I can let the arm then relax against, right? It's just a little bit stronger stretch there in my triceps for me when I do it that way. If I let the elbows both bend or take my arms a little lower, a little less in the arm, I'm still getting all this great stuff on my side though. So you're gonna pick for yourself. And then if you slide your legs over and even take one leg and kind of hook it over the other leg um, and let the hip get heavier, then you'll get maybe a little bit more along the IT band or along the outer part of your leg. You just wanna make sure your knee doesn't complain about the choice that you just made, okay? So nothing that feels like sharp or shooting or even numbness or burning in a joint, uh, as long as none of those things are present, then you can just let yourself get kind of heavy into this little banana shape. And it's not an aggressive shape. We're not trying to uh, <laughs> curl up into a donut, we're just, just one side's a little longer than the other. And we'll stay with this for a couple more minutes. favorite shapes to breathe deep in because one lung is a little bit different than the other in terms of the pressure. So it's really interesting to feel the different ways that the lungs can expand with or against the pressure that I'm putting on the lung by stretching out all the tissue around it.
take a big breath. And then we're going to wander back to the center. Oh, and this is my favorite part, which is to notice what happened after. And sometimes it feels like I'm longer or taller on one side, or it feels like one arm is a little bit longer than the other. That's really lovely. So give yourself a little bit of movement if you like. I like to do little windshield wipers or a back massage in between the sides. And we're just going to wait for about another two breaths before we do the other side. <coughs> Swing in the legs over as you like. Holding on to the wrist or maybe not. So that's up to you, just whatever feels interesting. way back oh, to the center and just check in and see if everything feels pretty even. I'm not sure what you would do if you were uneven. I guess start over again. So give yourself a little movement, a little back massage. Oh. <laughs> it might be temporarily. Oh. Blinded by the light. Oh. And then we're going to come up to all fours. So I'm going to get rid of my um, softer props and set those off to the side. I'm going to grab my yoga blocks and I'm going to put my hair up. And we're going to meet up, all of us together in all fours, so you guys do whatever you need to do.
you've already made your way to all fours, you may have already started this movement, but if you haven't gotten there quite yet, then you can start these little cat shapes in your back where you round your back up, curl the tailbone under, push up through the shoulders a little bit, and see if you can get your low back to kind of join that round feeling. And then when you come to this shape, we're kind of trying to get the upper back a little movement, right? So you might even let the shoulder blades kind of move around on your upper back. So just move in between those two shapes. take ourselves um, into a, a kind of a child's posey shape, um, but it's called puppy dog. And I'm going to do it with these blocks because I'll get a little deeper, again, a little deeper stretch in my tricep area. So I put the blocks so that they're far enough apart um, that I can put one elbow on each block and then close enough together that um, I'm not wider apart than my shoulders, but I've got a little bit of room for my head. So I'm going to essentially just wiggle back until I've got a nice feeling of stretch here. It's almost like downward dog. That's why it's puppy dog. <laughs> and mostly knees are about under the hips. And I'm letting my upper back and my elbows, um, or from my upper back to my elbows, really lengthen out. And by bending with the elbow, this helps give me more of that tricep stretch. Now you can do this without blocks, so you can try it just on the floor. I like it that way too. So I'm going to do one more big breath here. I'm going to press my elbows into the blocks and kind of shoot my weight forward so I can get off of that shape. Oh gosh, that's nice. And then Gonna do, we're going to do a little twist. Okay, so we're going to take one arm, thread it underneath the opposite arm, and we'll give ourselves just a little push. Or you can wrap this arm behind your back if you'd rather. So I'm kind of pressing my arm into the floor and kind of rolling back toward it. So that I'm getting a little more, again, a little bit more stretch in the upper back. Nothing too aggressive. Just feels kind of nice. <laughs> really nice, as the case may be. There's not a lot of weight on my head, it's just resting on the floor. One more breath here. Now, I'm gonna get myself kind of pulled together. So this left arm that I just had underneath me, that guy's gonna go in front and I'm gonna take the right leg out behind and reach between those two points. Give it a good long stretch and then I'm gonna bring this knee in and curl up around it. Now you can add the elbow also so that you can get a little bit more core work out of that. Right on, or you can leave the hand on the floor and just do the knee. One more time, coming back. Curling in. Now hold steady right there, and we'll bring this leg all the way forward and into a lunge. Now, if your arms are short, <laughs> you can extend them with yoga blocks. Now we're just going to send the hip forward and then ease it back so that we're going almost all the way into this hamstring stretch. So just go to where you feel the whisper of that and then come forward. And then come backward to the whisper of that stretch. And then come forward. And we're going to pause here. And there's a lot of different ways to do the arms. I'm going to put one hand on each hip and kind of pull backwards through my elbows a little. Create a little chest opening while I'm simultaneously giving this left hip a little stretch out. Stretch in, stretch up. <laughs> Some kind of a stretch. Nice deep breaths. You could also take your arms all the way up and do it that way if you like. Oh, this one's feeling kind of good. All right, so we're going to take one more big breath here. And 
and then I'm going to ease myself back, and this time I'm going to go all the way into that hamstring stretch. So I'm going to let myself fold over this leg. Now for me, when I fold more toward the leg, it's more centered in this back part of my hamstrings. If I fold myself a little more towards the center here, I'll get the inside hamstrings. I'm going to do that second. So right now, just folding here and feeling this sort of outer section. And then I'm going to switch it up just a little bit, move to the inside. And as I fold here, that gets a little more deep into this inner section of my thigh. Now you may want to stay with just one of those positions. Ooh, I like them both. Take one more breath. And then we're going to come back to the center and bring everything back to all fours. So I'm going to take this guy all the way back, give it a little shake, bring it down. And then just for a moment again, kind of feel that asymmetry in your body. You can feel how one side has done things the other side hasn't done exactly. Cool. <laughs> All right, so once again, we're going to do that whole sequence starting with this little twist. And again, you could wrap this arm behind your back, or I like to use it to sort of give myself this little extra bit of a turn or a little extra snuggle into the shoulder. I'm not putting any more weight on my head, but just extending that arm gives me a little bit more kind of. Um, just a little bit of pressure to work with. So I can kind of push a little bit more deeply into the floor if I want to, or roll a little bit more into the twist. Just gives me some resistance to work with. I can change the position in the hip to make it more interesting. And then just take deep breaths. If it's already interesting, don't add to it, just explore it. So we're going to take one more breath here, and then we're going to kind of pull this together. And again, this arm, that right arm is going out, and the left leg is going back. So we're going to stretch between those two points. And then you can oh, try to draw in a little bit through your core, and then bring either both the elbow and the knee together underneath you, or you can put the hand down and just work with that leg, stretch it back, bring it in. Stretch it back. Bring it in one more time. We're going to hover right there, lift, and then putting your hand down, that leg stepping all the way forward into our lunge. And so again, once you're in place for the lunge, we're going to do this kind of on the gentle side of things for a second. Going forward and coming back just to the whispers of those stretchy spots. Going forward. just feeling out this range of motion. Like, are there spots that feel extra tender today? So we're going to go into the lunge and stay. So you're going forward just enough to feel that stretch up through the front of that right hip. And again, you could come to these different positions, lace your fingers together behind your back or bring your arms overhead. So that one's up to you. We're going to take the hands down, we're going to ease the hips back, and we'll see about going into that hamstring stretch. And again, this is kind of up to you. I'm going to do a few breaths, kind of more centered over my leg, and then I'm going out to the diagonal. <coughs> Doing some over there.
next we'll take a few more breaths in this oh, here in this shape about three transition back to our all fours position. We can give this leg a little bit of a shake out. And then once you're here, you have the choice of taking a child's pose and then coming into downward dog or going directly to downward dog if that sounds like a plan. Sometimes for me this feels really nice just to do a little rinse first. Kind of come back to the center. And then you can bring yourself to that downward dog shape. Now, <clears throat> for me, it's best to keep my hands shoulder distance apart. And the easiest way to see that is when you're in all fours. Some of us wind up with our hands much wider in down dog. Now, you can certainly experiment and see what's right for you. But the more I line my bones up, <clears throat> with my actual torso, <laughs> the much less stress my shoulders endure in this pose. So <clears throat> experiment, if you're used to having your hands a little wider, experiment with starting to bring them in a little bit. It might take time to get them closer to shoulder distance apart. Just feel that out for yourself. And then kind of connect to your upper back a little bit. We're going to give the hips a little wiggle. Oh, press the heels towards the ground and then you're gonna walk yourself together so I'm gonna walk my hands backwards you can walk your feet upwards and then once you're standing on your feet wiggle them out so that they're kind of wide bend your knees you can turn the toes out or in and we're just gonna let ourselves sort of sway a little or make a little figure eight shape here One last little pose that sort of transitions us from the yin into more of a flow. <coughs> so we're going to come up halfway. Oh, and then fold all the way over and then come all the way up to standing. And give yourself a nice big stretch. <clears throat> and then, whew. So then we're going to find a mountain pose. Now, I'm going to wander up to the top of my mountain in just a second. But first, I'm going to find this, this kind of solid mountain pose. Now, there's a lot of ideas out there about mountain pose. And if you have a favorite idea, cool, stick with your favorite idea. Here's my thoughts turn your feet forward and put them about hips distance apart. If you're not used to standing that way, it puts you in a relatively neutral stance and it'll you know, turn on some awareness in your legs. A little soft at the knee, a little soft at the hip, but turn your core on. And then feel your, where your shoulder blades are in space on your back and see if you can allow them to drop down the back with no real feeling of overpressurizing. So there are these ideas about turning the arms out really forcefully in this pose. And for me, the issue with that is that I carry a lot of tension in my upper back. Um, that's where I put my stress. And when I turn my arms out like that, it makes that area more tense. And I want it to be less tense. <laughs> I want more of the work to come from my core. And so for me, the right answer is to allow the arms to relax. You see what's right for you. But be open to the idea that you might have to explore that. Now, we're going to pause for two more breaths, and then we'll get flowing. But here we go. <laughs> nice big inhale. Hopefully it will keep time from here on out. We're going to fold forward. Coming up halfway. Exhale, fold. Now, we're going to step back into a downward dog. From downward dog, we're going to come into a plank. Now you can make this a full plank, or you can modify your plank, and you can hold the full plank and modify it just before you lower down. 
but we're going to stay here for two more breaths. If you're in the modified plank, really draw that navel in and try to feel that slope from the shoulder to the knee. Then we're going to lower to the ground or halfway to the ground. Come into cobra or an upward dog. And take yourself back to your downward dog through that plank. Now the right leg's going to come up. And as you exhale, bring that knee in. Inhale, stretch that leg back. Pause right there. Sink towards the left heel. See if you can press yourself back a bit. Oh. And then we're going to step this leg slightly to the outside diagonal. So rather than stepping it straight down the center, a little more on the diagonal here. And we'll take this moment, kind of being up on the toes, to come in. Oh and then see if we can straighten that leg out a little and come in and straighten that leg out a little. And then we're gonna step this left foot up here to the diagonal. So lean into it and step it forward. And then we can take the squat. <coughs> so pausing here for a couple breaths. This is one of my favorite things this week. <laughs> And then we're going to fold forward. We've got this wide space. So we can add a little movement. <coughs> and then we're going to come all the way up to standing. Oh, and come back to that mountain pose. <coughs> nice big inhale. Oh, fold forward up halfway. Exhale, fold. We'll step back to down dog. From down dog, coming into your plank. Holding the plank. And then lowering down your choice of halfway or all the way. That's a little loose. <laughs> coming into your cobra. Taking it back to your down dog. So now the left leg's going to lift. And we'll bring it in. And stretch it back. And sink into the right heel if you can. Oh, and then we're going to step this guy off to the diagonal. And pause. Staying on those back toes. Just kind of shifting forward. And backward a little forward and backward a little <laughs> forward <laughs> and backward a little and then as we shift forward again we're going to make sure the weight is forward enough that we can step this ooh, right foot up to come into our squat One more breath there. And we're going to fold forward, and again, we've got this nice wide base. So we can create that little bit of movement. And we're going to come up halfway. And all the way to standing. And then find our mountain pose. So shifting the weight into the right leg, we're going to take the left leg into a tree pose. And the tree can be, the foot can be up on the thigh, it can be down on the calf muscle, it can be down by your ankle. Just be careful of your knee joint. Make sure it's on a solid bone, at least the heel. <laughs> Take it a big breath. You're going to pick this left leg up, and we're going to step it back into a warrior two. And it might take a little second to line everything up just right. So the hip is going to follow. So the first thing we want to line up is we're just going to line this knee up so that it feels like it points directly over this foot. And if you want to get like hashy, <laughs> like deep in the weeds about it, you can consider that it's pointing kind of towards your second to last toe. 
And I'm not sure if I would worry too much about that. Just make sure your knee is going forward. And then if your hip is on a little bit of a diagonal, that's not going to be a problem. The hip doesn't need to be squared to the side of the mat because that's going to drag the knee in. And the back foot, just follow the hip with it so that you feel solid, right? If you need a little wider stance, make your stance a little wider so it feels nice and solid. And then we're going to come back to reverse and over to side angle. And we're going to pause right there for a couple breaths and really reach into it. So I'm not laying on my leg, but it's here for support and for me to kind of push off against. But feel that stretch on that side. Oh, that is good. <laughs> Take one more big breath here. Beautiful. Then we're going to straighten out this leg and come into triangle. Now I need a little bit less space for triangle, so I'm just going to bring it in a notch. And then stretch into it and feel like where is it landing in your back? Should your arm be down here or down here on your hip? Is there a good spot for that arm to land? <laughs> giving yourself permission to be wherever your upper back says your arm should go. And one more big breath here. And then we're going to bend this knee, right? And we're going to step ourselves back into down dog. So I'm going to put the hands on the mat and step back. And then pause for just a moment and sort of appreciate the difference in your body. And when you're ready, come forward into your plank modify it or full, lower down, and into your choice of a back bend, oh. <laughs> and then come on back to your downward dog. We're going to take that right leg up again, nice big stretch, bring it in, take it back, big stretch, bring it out to the diagonal, and then we're going to take this left leg, step it up to the diagonal, and come into the squat. So you can come up a little higher or drop in a little lower into the squat. It's your choice. Or really your body might have other ideas. <laughs> Take in a big breath. Good. We're going to fold forward. Come up halfway. Oh, fold. Give it a little rinse. And then come all the way to standing and find that mountain pose. Oh. Can you feel the difference? Having done a bunch of stuff on one side but not the other yet. Oh, that feels good. Okay, so we're shifting the weight into the left leg. Right leg is going to form that tree pose. And again, you can put your foot where you think it should go. If your balance is a little wobbly, so be it. We're going to take one more breath, and then we're going to pick up this right leg and step ourselves back into Warrior Two. And again, take that moment to line your pose up so everything feels just right. Come back to Reverse Warrior. Oh. And then we'll take this side angle pose and lengthen into it. And breathe. <laughs> oh, it's a nice pose. <laughs> take a big breath. We're going to transition this into... Oh, a triangle. <laughs> Finding your triangle. Maybe you look up, maybe you look down. Connect to your upper back a little. Oh, and then we're going to take this guy, bring it down to downward dog and then step it on back. And you can finish that vinyasa again. All right, now you might be finished with your vinyasa. If not, flow with me, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll come back to down dog. 
You're gonna take that left leg up. Bring it in. Stretch it back. Step it to the diagonal. Bring the right one to the diagonal. And one more time, we're gonna come into the squat. And again, it's as low as your hips will let you go. Some people will get way deeper than me. Some of you might be way shallower. <laughs> That's okay, wherever our legs will let us go is where we go. Take a nice big breath. Now we're gonna sit it down from here, so some people will be able to just sit down on the mat, but if that's not you, then you can come back to kind of a kneeling position and then sit yourself down. And I'm gonna turn myself around sideways so you can, it's a little easier to see. So from here, I'm gonna take the right leg out straight and the left leg in a bent position. So I'm back to this tree shape, essentially. Wherever my foot was comfortable landing in the standing tree, it might be comfortable landing here as well. And so I just slid my right sit bone back a little. Right leg is straight, left leg is bent. I'm gonna fold straight over this right leg. Now, while I'm here, I'm gonna be a little more active. So I'm gonna bend this knee slightly, rotate my leg so the toes point straight up. And then as I fold, I'm gonna try to lengthen through my breastbone so this is a much more active stretch and some people will be able to grab their foot, but some of us won't. And so whatever we're doing, if the, everything is really active, I'm actively rotating this leg in, active little bend in the knee, active lengthening through the spine. That's that yang kind of idea of things. So I'm gonna take a couple more breaths here. Big inhale, hold that in, come all the way out. Now we're gonna keep the legs in this configuration. We're just gonna switch things around a little bit. So we're gonna to twist towards this bent knee. You can put a hand on the outside of it. If you'd like, you can pick that knee up. I'm gonna leave it down because I can press down with the thigh and lift up with my breastbone and that gives me just a little bit of resistance to kind of work with in creating my twist. Now I'm not pulling with my arm, but what I am doing is lengthening, getting tall, and then using my core to twist myself into the pose. And then I'm gonna come back to turning this right leg on, rolling it up so the toes point straight up, a little bend in the knee, a little more actively trying to be tall. And I'm just using the resistance of pushing my leg into my hand to help with that. Take one more breath here. Now, we're not gonna totally untwist. We're gonna keep this shape and side bend out over this right leg. <laughs> so I'm just still turned a bit to my left and now stretching out my side one more time. Two more breaths. And then we're gonna come all the way up. Oh, come back to the center. Take the legs out, rinse everything, and we're just gonna pause for a second and let the head, the neck, and the spine all kind of shimmy back into place. Feel it. it takes about 30 seconds for me for everything to kind of all the fluids to move to the opposite sides again and everything get even. All right, it's feeling pretty good. So we're gonna do the opposite. So the left leg is gonna be straight, the right leg is gonna be my bent leg, and again, I'm just gonna pull that sit bone back a little bit. So it sort of swings me towards the left a bit. So I'm gonna change that a little bit. So again, I'm gonna take this 
left leg, I'm gonna roll the thigh toward the center line there. So the toes point up, I'm gonna bend that knee a little bit, I'm gonna lift my heart. And as I fold in, I'm folding with the pelvis, keeping that length as best I can. And again, you may not fold very much or you might wind up with your forehead resting on your shin bone. We all have different range of motion. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with whatever your range of motion is. Just do these actions and turn on these internal rotators. And feel yourself turn a little bend in the knee, really engages your quadriceps, these muscles on the top of your thigh. Use those to help you bring your pelvis forward. One of them is attached, <laughs> it'll help. Take nice deep breaths. We're gonna try for two more. Yeah, so take a big inhale. Hold it and you can come all the way up. Now we can let this leg relax for just a second while we sort of get ourselves aligned in the twists. So I'm just turning again towards this leg. Some of you may have brought that knee up tall. Once you're turned a bit, you're gonna once again turn this leg on. So rotating that thigh in, toes are pointing up. I'm gonna reach around for this outside knee. Now if you can't reach the outside knee, just grab your shin bone. And just see what's available within your reach. Sit up taller. Activate that leg and bring your pelvis into a neutral alignment so that there's a little bit more room for that back to twist. The pelvis is out of alignment, your spine's not going into the full expression of a twist. Just see if we can use these arrangements to help with that. Twisting, we're just gonna let ourselves side bend out over this left leg. Take it some nice deep breaths, Yogi. inhale come all the way out and then we're gonna whoo, let that rinse itself out a little Just notice how those poses make you feel now just a couple more breaths here so we're gonna do one more of these forward bending shapes and this one we're gonna let our back get rounded we're coming all the way around to kind of where we started with the legs. So we're gonna bring the soles of the feet together. Now, make the um, diamond pretty big here. And you can even separate the feet out a little bit if it's more comfortable for it to be wider. We're just kind of, we're just hearkening back to this butterfly-like shape. We're gonna let the back turn into the a rounded shape. So this is called the tortoise. And there are extreme versions of it where you put your arm under your leg and stretch the arm all the way forward so that the leg rests up here on your upper arm. And if you have that range of motion and you wanna go for that, all right. Otherwise, <laughs> follow me. Where all we're gonna do is just let the arms rest out to the side and let the back get round. Now don't be aggressive here because we're letting the back round so we want it to be soft, okay? And then we're gonna let the breath do all the good work. So nice deep breaths. And try to imagine kind of the breath filling your back with that sort of um, structure of a turtle shell. The turtle shell has all of its spinal vertebrae in it. Right? So the shell is an extension of its kind of bony spine. So can your breath turn into an extension of your spine in your imagination, of course.
take two more big breaths. Now before you leave the pose, just notice how you feel mentally or emotionally as well as physically. And then when you're inhale, find you, you can come up when you're ready. I come up really slow. I just let my spine kind of restructure, kind of re-engage, and then oh, come all the way out with the hips. Now, there's an idea out there in the yoga world that forward bending, especially kind of deeper forward bends, um, allow the, have an effect on the mind and on the emotional state of the body in that they provide a kind of calming, grounding, or centering impact, right? That you, um, especially if you are experiencing anxiety, that forward bends will help you feel more centered in yourself and more grounded. Now, I like to hear those ideas and then test them in my own practice. And I will say that for myself, I find that true for some poses and then some maybe not as true. But in general, I would suggest that you notice if they have that impact on you. Because especially in times where there's a lot of anxiety, kind of collectively, um, even if we don't normally experience that, because there's kind of a collective experience of that, it might kind of fall over onto us a little bit, and we might experience some sleeplessness or some other symptoms of anxiety that we aren't used to experiencing. So these poses might provide for those, in those instances, a little bit of relief. Now, as someone who has suffered for a large part of my adult life with anxiety disorders and things where there's an excessive amount of anxiety, I find yoga in general very helpful. <laughs> so uh, you try out some of these forward bends and see if you think they work that way for you, and then you can put them in your back pocket and maybe do them with your meditation practice or with your yoga practice. Now, the good news is, yogis, that with my lecture, we have arrived at the appropriate time to do some Shavasana. So I'm gonna move my blocks out of the way. I'm gonna use the pillow that I had earlier under my back, under my legs, and I'm gonna lay down on this mat. So I invite you to lay down on your mat in whatever way is comfortable for you. So if lying on your back is not comfortable, you would rather lay on your side, you can certainly do that. Just prop up your head and give your arms something to relax over. Maybe put a little pillow between your knees. And then once you're kind of here, and maybe what you need is like one more little back massage, right? Before you can really stretch out and relax. Oh. But once we're here, and you've gotten all the little things adjusted, then really let yourself surrender. This is the ultimate yin pose, if there is one. <laughs> um, even though we do it at the end of almost all yoga classes as a way to sort of push the reset button on the nervous system, um, it's a great opportunity to practice the sort of qualities of yin, which are to let go and to give yourself over to the experience that you're in in the moment.
yogis, take a moment just to notice that your breath is coming and going again. And then take a breath so deep you can feel it all the way to your toes. Let go with a really big <sighs> and then wiggle your fingers and toes, stretch them apart, give them a wiggle, give your whole body a big stretch. Maybe a back massage. When you're ready, you can sit up. Hello, love muffin. And we will say goodbye to each other. Take a nice big breath together. Big inhale. Big sigh. <sighs> Namaste, yogis. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.